When playing the newer Fire Emblem games, it can sometimes feel like you're spending the entire game building a unit to become something incredible. But by the time you actually use them with all the skills and classes you've been building towards, you're already right at the end of the game with only a few maps to breeze through. If you're someone that wishes you had more time to play with your convoluted endgame skill builds, well, have I got the unit for you. Jacob is one of the two units and fates that comes with the unique quirk of being in a promoted class while still gaining experience as quickly as unpromoted units. And due to how skills are learned in Fates, this means that any time Jacob changes his class, he will quickly start learning new skills that are normally only obtainable when most units are close to maxing out. He'll be the first unit to grab capstone skills like Sword Fair, which grants a flat plus 5 damage to all of his attacks when he's using swords. Life and Death, a crazy plus 10 damage to every hit he lands if you're willing to plan around the additional 10 damage he takes each time he gets hit. And Replicate, which just allows you to create a second Jacob. All of these skills are readily accessible to Jacob well before the game reaches its halfway point. You will have more than enough time for Jacob to take full advantage of these skills and pull ahead of your other units. And that's what makes Jacob one of the most fun units to theorycraft with in the entire series. But the game that seems to bring the most potential from him is Birthright. Joining me today for this extra long discussion is Bloog, an extremely experienced player in all the Fates routes with a YouTube channel full of cool players. So let's go over everything about Jacob and Birthright, and how he can bring out his full potential. Now, Jacob, he gets recruited as soon as Chapter 2, meaning that he is the earliest unit you get to use and make progress with outside of Corrin. They are very often considered one of the more broken units in the entire game because a lot of the level 15 promoted skills that you get from most classes are extremely good. They're level 15 for a reason, because the game doesn't want you to get these overpowered yeah. skills early. But Jacob and Felicia, just say no to that and uh, get them anyways. The Trooper class line that he is originally in doesn't have the most crazy skills at level 15. He gets Inspiration, which is very good, but that requires a heart seal into Strategist and spending at least two levels in a primarily magic user class. And he gets Tonebreaker from Butler, which he's probably going to be doing pretty well against mages anyways. But it gets really crazy once you start dipping into his marriage classes. I think Tonebreaker is actually pretty decent on Jacob. Not so much Felicia, but Jacob has a lot easier of a time one-rounding mages anyways, and there yeah. aren't a lot of like big clumps of mages in Birthright, but for the few times that there are, he can reach perfect dodge rates against them, and he will just eat every enemy in a, a clump of tome users without taking any damage at all. That is true, but there aren't very many exclusive tome users in Birthright. A lot of them are Malignites with axes or Dark Knights with swords once you get to later in the game. But if you manage to get Tome Breaker early on, it can be useful, yeah. Especially for Paralogs. So, Jacob has pretty middling growths across the board. His strength growth is 40, his defense growth is 30. His speed growth is pretty good at 50, but he still won't be reaching quite as large numbers as most of your other units. One thing that hurts Jacob and Felicia the most is that since they start as promoted classes, they don't get stats on promoting because obviously they can't promote. So especially in the later game, you're going to really want to get like damage stacking and like stat stacking skills to help out their pretty poor stats in comparison to the rest of what your army is going to look like because they will get out statted eventually and the only thing that really keeps them like super afloat is the fact that they can get just so many skills so quickly. His Cavalier class line really does help him with this because it gives him access to Elbow Room, which is flat plus 3 damage just as soon as you level him up once in that class, which is a big reason why I see a lot of people in the early days recommending that you use your first Heart Seal on Jacob to give him a horse, giving him 8 move and access to Elbow Room to instantly start his damage stack, then starting you off with a Mega Forge in like a uh, brass naginata or something to get him to start one rounding things immediately with corn pair up for the case in jacob in particular he has it very very good if you're doing jacob as your first servant you are probably going to keep him in butler for a little bit 
at like level 13 or 15, it may be not a terrible idea to start thinking about what his marriage classes should be and what skills you want to be getting for him and he's very he's very flexible with what he could want so there, there's not really a lot of bad options for him so he is one of your two early healers in birthrights the other one is sakura and azama comes slightly later but jacob has a magic stat that isn't great he has six at base and a 25 percent growth with the low healing output of Birthright's Festals, your healing probably isn't going to be the greatest with Jacob unless you start splurging on your Sun Festals pretty early on. His staff rank will eventually help him a little bit with this, but it's always going to be kind of an issue if you want to top units up to full, which sometimes might be necessary if you're playing really aggressively trying to make the most of a unit's bulk. Yeah, he's he's really just not the best healer, especially since in chapter 6 you, well chapter 5, uh, you get Sakura to join your party who's just a better healer. He does get helped a little bit in Birthright because in Butler he can use the Flame Shuriken, and it, specifically in Birthright and Revelation he can have a Forged Flame Shuriken, which might help his uh, damage output a little bit against more defensive but less resistant enemies. Yeah, Norian classes really have pretty low resistance in general, so having a magic option that's pretty easily available is very good for Jacob especially because he has a magic growth, unlike a lot of units in Birthright. <laughs> His other weapon, of course, is Shurikens, which really does help with helping set up kills for your other units. If you want to train like Hayato or Mozu or Setsuna, using Jacob's new buff units is probably one of your better options alongside Kaze, just because Jacob is going to have 6 move, which is higher than Kaze's 5 move. He doesn't have Poison Strike, but he does still have access to debuffing weapons, especially the Iron Dagger and the Flame Shuriken to help tune his damage to make sure that he doesn't get a kill. Yeah, I actually think Jacob is one of the better debuffers um, in the early game because, like, Compared to Kaze, he's probably not going to be doubling as many enemies, so it's going to be like a lot less of a, a toss-up if like, oh, is my debuffer going to accidentally double this unit and kill, or um, or have like a second chance at accidentally critting the enemy, which would not be great. Um, Jacob normally doesn't have to worry about that, which is usually pretty nice. His personal skill is Evasive Partner. If he is the backpack or supporting units to Corrin, it grants Corrin plus 15 avoid and minus 3 damage taken, which in early game birthright often isn't super practical to use because Corrin is probably going to be doing something pretty far away from Jacob. Uh, in late game it can be very useful at helping Corrin juggernauts, but in early game when you're doing things like the chapter 8 instance recruitment of Hinoka in chapter 9. Korn is probably going off alone to recruit Oboro and Hinata. Chapter 10, your units are probably going to be spread out a bit further than usual. Evasive Partner probably isn't going to be the most useful skill early game, but where it really shines is later in the game when you want Korn to maybe be one of your carries. Evasive Partner's minus 3 damage taken is really good. Yeah, the minus 3 damage is also really good, and also the avoid plus 15 does help a lot more in the context of Birthright, because a lot of Fates fans are like primarily Conquest players, and in Conquest, the AI is programmed to where if you have too much avoid, they just won't attack you. The AI in Birthright does not do that. Um, so a lot of like the late game axe guys will still attack into Corrin even if they have zero hit. And Jacob allows for that to happen way more often. Yeah, unfortunately his pair up bonuses don't boost bulk very well. He gives strength, speed, skill, strength, and skill. Not great, it helps with reliability, making sure you hit your one round thresholds, but isn't the most tanky pair up that you can have, but evasive partner really does give you an extra boost in a way that other units just cannot match. Yeah, from the raw stats alone, if you want him to be a really great pair up bot for Corrin, it's probably best for him to go into another class and use the class pair up bonuses rather than his personal ones. 
strength, skill, and speed is always nice, of course, but usually your Corrin will probably have all three of those stats, like, down already. Unless yeah. you have a Bane in one of the three, which, like, wh why why would you? <laughs> and generally, in Birthrights, uh, Magical Corrin succeeds better than Physical Corrin's anyways, so the extra strength probably isn't going to help you very much. But if you do want to do Ninja Corn, then yeah, it definitely is helpful to have plus two strength for free if you're using Jacob as your arrow. One nice thing about Butler in general, uh, you mentioned earlier Chapter 8, Butlers do not have restricted movement in desert. Yes. So Jacob isn't affected by the desert tiles at all. So he can have a really good early lead. If, if you give him like a good like strength pair up or like if you pair up or a stronger general unit with him, he can help pull that unit ahead and start clearing out the uh, area a lot quicker than normal. He probably won't be able to do it all by himself because of the low strength of a butler at that point in the game, but he can still do some good stuff. Another really useful thing about Jacob in the early game is the Jean Guillaume skill. It grants female units within two spaces minus two damage taken, which is really good because a lot of the female units that you're going to be using early game are extremely squishy. I'm talking like Mozu, Setsuna, or Rochi. They really do appreciate the extra minus two damage taken with Jacob near them. I know that's part of my chapter eight strategy involves Orochi one rounding three Oni Savages in one turn on enemy phase, and the damage reduction from Jacob's aura and Sakura's aura combined allow her to survive doing that without a defense tonic, which is really nice. Yeah, I especially think that Jacob's Jante aura is really nice for specifically Hana, because unlike Orochi, unlike probably Mozu, and unlike Setsuna, Hana has a lot worse access to one two range, especially early on in birth rate. Um, so if you actually want to like try to use that unit, um, it's going to be a lot harder without Jantium because uh, she just takes so much damage if she doesn't avoid the attacks. Another good use for Jantium might be to tip off Rinka's defense. Oh yeah. To make her take zero damage on enemy phase and. That would, it, it would help Rinka like wall and bait enemies towards her a lot easier for your other units, which would, is pretty nice. Yeah. The nice thing about having Jacob as your first servant is that a lot of your male units early in the game don't really need the extra bulk support, like Corrin, Silas. Tsubaki, but yeah, yeah Tsubaki has high defense too. Um, you do have units like Kaze and Saizo who might want the extra bulk a little bit, but since they're primarily probably going to be fighting at two range anyways, and not going to be taking too many counterattacks, it won't matter as much as you might think. Yeah, unless you're doing like super aggressive pushes with them, in which case you're probably not going to be getting Jacob in range to give his aura in the first place, so yeah. yeah. So yeah. Jacob's base class set is Troubadour and Cavalier. Troubadour is pretty nice in that it gives him the free res plus two at base along with the Jaunty Amora. And once he reaches level five in Butler, he will get Lift to Serve and eventually Tome Breaker. Lift to Serve is generally one of the skills that you will never complain about having. It's just free healing if you have it equipped when you heal another unit, and it can really help save action economy if you want to use Jacob on like an enemy face to chip down for setting up the kill. You don't have to waste a turn healing Jacob in particular, you can just have him heal another one of your shipped units and get your healing that way. Since Jacob is the more combat focused unit uh, of the two servants, it's actually really, really nice that he gets live to serve for pretty much free. Yeah. Because what he can do with that is he can do like a big enemy phase. And then after that big enemy phase, he's able to just retreat and then go heal a unit. And then he'll be back to full HP again without needing to use like Sakura's healing or someone to get him back to full HP, which is really nice. He can just do it himself. Res plus two is pretty nice for Jacob since he has a somewhat of a low growth and base of resistance, especially around when the time he wants to like reclass into something else because then his res is just going to get worse. Yeah. So having that extra bit of resistance is a, a, not 
overly helpful because the plus two skills don't usually uh they, they're they're usually not going to make or break the entire like plan you have but it is it is nice as just like a little safety net jontium and inspiration are actually both really good because he can reclass into cavalier and get a lot more movement that way and he'll just have a lot more general bulk which will allow him to more aggressively apply his auras to units that are in like big enemy ranges and depending on the bulk of the unit he's trying to support then the enemies will probably ignore jacob yeah and remember in birthrights it doesn't matter if you stack to zero damage taken because the enemies will still attack you it's particularly funny to use jatium in combination with evasive partner because if jacob just stands next to corin she has minus five damage taken on top of having a dragonstone equipped. Corrin will just never take damage for a lot of early game. It lets her do things like setting up kills with Kodachi as well. It's really nice for like, if you're trying to go for like the Garen kill in chapter tw ten, uh, 12. Yeah. Um, oh, I guess chapter 11 would be pretty big for defense because there's like a lot of Wyvern Lords and stuff. Yeah, the Wyvern Lords and Kinchis really are threatening in that chapter if you don't take them out of player phase. He's also one of the few units that has access to the rare Rally Resistance skill in Birthrights because you can only get it through Troubadour, which is a Norian class, which I believe Jacob and Felicia are the only units that have it guaranteed in their class sets. Yeah, Jacob, Felicia, and their kids. Yeah. And I guess their spouses. Yeah. Um, Unless you're really crazy and you capture Daniela or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Rally Resistance is... It's okay. There aren't too many case uses of the skill, to be honest, just in in general of fates, because a lot of the units that you want to have fighting mages are already pretty resistant anyways. Yeah. However, it can be nice for some specific circumstances. One that I can think of off the top of my head is in chapter 24, there's a lot of magic orbs and a lot of tome only malignite reinforcements yeah and it can help you tank those a lot more easily and enemies in birthright will generally still try to maximize expected damage so the mixed units will still attack with tomes if they think that they can deal more damage and rally res mm -hmm. can just help mitigate some of the damage you take in general if you are setting a unit into a mix cluster of enemies yeah and combine his sheer damage reduction that he can give to other units with his natural access to healing then you can effectively get invincible units <laughs> yeah rally res on saizo and ryoma really does help them survive just sending them into a general group of enemies you don't have to care what they are they'll probably survive at the end <laughs> yeah it's really nice to just like have him around. One unfortunate thing is that he is going to have to use a heart seal in order to get rally resistance yeah. and usually that's not going to be a viable option for your playthroughs because in most cases there are going to be way more units that would rather have the heart seal than Jacob. And even if you're using an early heart seal on Jacob, you're probably putting him in one of the cavalier classes and not strategist. So you're probably going to have to be waiting until pretty late to get Rally Res and Inspiration. But yeah, Inspiration is a crazy skill. It gives plus two damage dealt, minus two damage taken to units within two spaces. It doesn't matter what gender they are. And it stacks with Jean Dion and Evasive Partner if you really want to do that. Although if he's in the backpack of Corrin, then of course the within two spaces auras don't apply but if they're somehow doing something in attack stance then you might be able to do something crazy although then the problem becomes making sure that jacob is out of the way so that's corn is the one that's doing all the combat inspiration is probably the best aura in the entire game yes if it weren't for the fact that it was a level 15 skill i would probably rank it way higher as a skill in general, but on Jacob specifically, it is particularly insane because Jacob 
isn't actually too fragile compared to most healers. Yeah. Like, he can go into enemy lines and take, like, one or two hits before he's ever in any real danger. And if he's gotten live to serve, which he, there's really no excuse to not have gotten, then he will have a pretty hard time dying. Um, unless he's in the range of just like too many enemies. And that will allow him to do a minus two damage reduction to male units, minus four to female units, and then minus seven to a female Corrin, yep. which is really good. Uh, on top of the avoid plus 15 if you're using, uh, if you're adjacent to Corrin. If you want to add that even further, then he gets more damage reduction from Rally Resistance if you're fighting more resistant-based enemies. And especially in the context of Corrin, who has horrible resistance, it's actually really good. It's yeah. like very, very useful. And the fact that Inspiration is gotten from a class that has 8 movement, Jacob has a very easy time actually catching up to the units that need it, which is probably one of the better cases for it. Everyone loves the Horse Spirit for its crazy plus three defense and resistance, but Jacob just being Korn's backpack already gives her an equivalent boost to the Horse Spirit's bulk boost. It's crazy. And speaking of the Horse Spirit, if in Strategist, um, you can have Jacob use the Horse Spirit. Yes. And that will get him the defense boosts, which will allow him to be even more aggressive with applying his auras than he already can be. Yeah. Unfortunately, he probably won't be one rounding with the horse spirits just because he has more difficulty getting his magic damage outputs to be crazy. But of course, he can still marry into Omiyoji to get magic plus two tome fair. But he's generally not as magically oriented as he is strength oriented. So he will still be able to survive in the front lines, but getting the kills in one round is going to be more difficult. Although, if you want to set up kills, Jacob is very good for that. And of course, the last skill from Troubadour is going to be Tome Breaker, of course. It really does help on player phase if you are going up against a tome-wielding enemy. I know a lot of the Dark Knights in particular start with their tomes equipped. Do some of the Malignites also have their tomes equipped? The Malignites in Chapter 27 do start with their tomes equipped. One of them has a Brave Axe? Goddamn. Okay. Yeah, wow. you really want to be killing that guy on fire face. <laughs> yeah, especially because axes have a uh, weapon triangle advantage against the uh, daggers. Yeah. But um, yeah, he is a pretty solid user of Tome Breaker. There is a string of maps where there are a lot of more tome oriented units. Like, it's not the most unreasonable to have a level 15 Jacob at like chapter 16, 17. Pleasure Palace and the Ice Map, yeah. Yeah, around there. Um, in fact, there's multiple rooms in Chapter 16 that are just, like, tome only. Yes. And he's really good for clearing those out. Yeah. There's a lot of sorcerers in Flora's map, too. He's pretty good against Leo, um, though everyone is. Yeah. Um, but him in particular, because he's probably going to have perfect dodge rates against both Leo and Odin yeah. in that map. And there's a lot of paralogs that he's very useful in with Tome Breaker too. The the one that I can think of off the top of my head is Mitama's paralog, which has oh, yeah. quite a significant number of sorcerers and omiyojis that actually move. Because there are a lot of berserkers on that map, which may look scary, but they have no movement stats, so they can't actually really harm you unless you actively go in their range. The mage units on that map, however, do not have this flag. The paralog where he's probably the most useful is Asugi's paralog, where you're choking the points and taking advantage of Inspiration, Jantium, and Rally Res on top of the 1-2 range healing that you have in Birthrights is really crazy. Yeah, it can let you, especially in Asugi's paralog where it's like a timed mission, Yeah, um, it can allow you to be a lot more aggressive with your positioning. Yeah. So a lot of people in the early days recommended Jacob as the user of the first heart seal to get him into one of the classes in the Cavalier class line. He can either get into Paladin or Great Knight. Paladin of course has the extra speed, while Great Knight has the extra strength and defense, while Paladin has the plus one move over Great Knight. 
What do you think of early reclassing Jacob? So I don't think it is the entirely worst idea. There's definitely worse options out there because like the Cavalier skills are very good. Yeah. And he gets them very quickly. Like he gets elbow room, just constant plus two, three damage, especially in birthright. Yeah. Where a lot of the tiles are going to be plain styles. Yeah. Shelter, which is a very, very valuable skill in Fates. It's, a, it's effectively a, a rescue skill from, like, GBA. And it is normally only obtainable on Silas. And sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you either haven't deployed Silas or Silas is out somewhere doing whatever else, probably just in the middle of 40 enemies. Yeah. And he won't be able to shelter a unit that needs sheltering. And Jacob can fill that role for him. I have previously discussed that I think Defender is a bit overrated. Yeah. It's not the worst on Jacob, though. I think he is one of the better users of Defender just because of how low his bases are and how low his gross are compared to what the other units will have. So it helps him a lot with like stat stacking. Aegis is just more sh selfish damage reduction, which can actually be pretty useful on Jacob considering how early he's able to get it. It does help him against mages in particular, as well as like later in the game, there are bow knights and early in the game, there are outlaws that Aegis helps against. It especially helps him because he's, if he ever ends up going into a more magical class, what's really probably going to hurt him is the units with bows. Like if he goes strategist, he's probably going to be behind units constantly, yeah. but that's not going to protect him from bows at mo in most cases. Yeah. And usually the case is the same with a more physical based class uh, against mages. Yes. I do think that there are better recipients of Heart Seal, especially in Birthright, because there's a lot of uses that a Butler Jacob can get without ever having to reclass until like kind of the late game. Meanwhile, some other units don't really get that luxury. If you watch a lot of Zorin videos, you'll often see him talking down about Cavalier Jacob as a worse Silas, but in the context of Birthright, a worse Silas is still going to be probably one of your best units early game. <laughs> Having access to Shelter even earlier than Silas, who has to level up from 7 to 10, Jacob can just get it in Chapter 7 before you even get Silas. And having a second Shelter user that also has 8 move as a Paladin or 7 move as a Great Knight can help you do some kind of crazy stuff in early game Birthrush, pushing ahead in ways that you probably weren't intended to, which can be kind of funny, even if it isn't that much more useful in the context of a more casual playthrough, if you're not going for the lowest turn count possible. But just having the second shelter user in a game that doesn't give you any other shelter users is really nice. Especially early shelter is especially useful in Birthright and Revelation because you get Azura very early yeah. in comparison to Conquest where you have to wait until chapter 9 to get access to your dancer. Yeah. Having an early reclassed Jacob can allow you to do a lot of shelter singing which can accelerate not only Azura's experience, but your other unit's experience, yes. because um, you will be able to have more actions generally on multiple turns. Also, having an early reclass, uh, Jacob has the benefit of having very, very high movement, along with high defense. And there are, especially in Chapter 7, there are, I believe, zero magic units on the enemy team, so it can allow you to just completely blaze through the map with almost zero thought. Very popular with low turn count players. One unfortunate thing about Insta reclassing Jacob is probably the fact that he loses unrestricted movement in Chapter 8, and then Chapter 10 is pretty annoying with all the forest tiles everywhere. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, he doesn't really hate the extra movement at all. If you're a Setsuna enjoyer, you will probably really like Cavalier Jacob for his ability to give her more options on player phase than you can with just Silas alone. 
it's kind of crazy. Yeah, once you get Silas to join, having two shelter users can just completely break the game in ways that the devs probably did not intend you to break. Yeah. One super nice thing about having Jacob in Paladin or Great Knight 2 is that he has a lot stronger dual strikes. So in Fates, when a unit is dual striking, the damage they do is what they would normally do if they were to attack as the lead unit, but cut in half. So as a butler, that is pretty bad for him because especially in the early game, daggers don't really do too much damage. And while he will be stuck in E-rank hell for a little bit if he reclasses early, it, once he gets out of that, he will have some pretty powerful dual strikes to help feeding the more weak units. And you do get a lot of really good lances in Birthrights. You get some effective weapons like the Sword Catcher and the Beast Killer. Once you get into the mid game, which can really help him tuning his dual strike damage outputs to what you need to get a kill. If he goes into Cavalier, he can also he also has sword access, which means he can use the Kodachi for 1-2 range. If you really want to train his lance rank to a high rank, you can also get him to the Guard Naginata, although your mileage may vary because you won't be attacking at 1-2 range. Yeah, I feel like getting Jacob to see in lances for Guard Naginata is primarily for a support-based Jacob. Yeah. If you're going to go down the route of just pure damage reduction, minus seven Corin, having Guard Nagidata Jacob can help him a lot with actually getting ignored. Yeah. Because one unfortunate thing about like super damage reduction is the fact that he's not giving the damage reduction to himself, so he's more susceptible to accidentally giving too many defensive auras, which can make the enemies attack into him, and uh, he does not want that. <laughs> In Great Knight, he does have Luna and Armored Blow. Armored Blow really does help him on player phase, making sure that he doesn't take as much damage from the late game silver weapons that you'll see on every single enemy. Armored Blow really helps Jacob, who isn't going to have the greatest bulk by the time you reach the end of the game. Armored Blow is pretty good for Jacob, especially if you end up reclassing him out of Great Knight after like grabbing it, because then he's going to be in a lot less defensive classes and he's going to probably benefit from Armored Blow a lot more. If he stays in Great Knight, it is going to be pretty nice still, just for general damage reduction. You can even stack that with Guard Naginata, say, and just take zero damage on player phase, yeah. which is always useful. It also allows him to be a lot more aggressive with like other weapons, like say Jacob wants to go attack the Armor Knights in chapter 25. He can just go up to them and like double them with a hammer Yeah. Um, and take zero damage out of the entire ordeal, despite Great Knights having really, really high strength. <laughs> Luna, of course, is technically useful in that it's just another way of getting an equivalent of a crit, but on Jacob, you will probably be getting a lot of skills that you would prefer to use over Luna, so it probably won't see very much use. Yeah, Jacob will probably also be one-rounding anyways, yeah. especially if he's in Great Knight. Yeah. So it's just completely useless. I, I very often say, and I will probably forever say, that Luna is probably the worst proc skill in the game. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and uh, it, it's no different here. He's one of the better users of Luna, but it's still not amazing. Yeah. So before we move on, there is one thing that we forgot to mention about Jacob. Now, Jacob is notable for being one of the best chefs in the entire game. He is tied with Perry, Anna, and Percy, meaning that if you put him in the mess hall, he will provide plus two to any ingredient stats that you put into a meal, along with an extra plus two to a random stat that is an HP. Uh, yeah, this is, like, meals are one of the more important ways to, like, stat stack things in Fates, because it, it just, it's, it's free, basically. Yeah. So, like, being able to have Jacob as your chef is incredible. Yeah, and the one thing that having Jacob as your first servant leads to is that 
most people are unintentionally sabotaging their runs by having Jacob be their My Castle attendant. Now, if you're the My Castle attendant, it means you cannot be in any of the buildings providing any of the benefits that you can, like providing sales in the weapon shop or rod shop, or providing meals from the mess hall. And if Jacob is the My Castle attendant, he cannot be cooking at the same time. Yeah, Jacob is one of three characters that can serve, actually one of four characters, I believe, that can serve as the uh, servant in the My Castle, which being Jacob, Felicia, Gunter, and I believe Flora, I yeah. could be wrong about that. And it's ideal that instead of Jacob, you make Felicia your servant or one of the generics your servant. Um, yeah. But a notable thing about Felicia is that in, in contrast to Jacob being an amazing chef, Felicia is one of the worst chefs. So having Jacob in the available pool for the mess hall is always going to be beneficial, while removing Felicia from the available pool for the mess hall is going to also be beneficial. So make Felicia your My Castle assistant as soon as she becomes available. And once you complete chapter six, remove Jacob from your My Castle attendant so that he becomes in the pool for the units that can go into the shops and the mess hall. Now, Fates is actually interesting in that it allows you to manipulate who goes into what building because there are some accessories that allow you to choose who goes where in the level 3 accessory shop. And if you watch some Zorin videos, you will know that the most important of these is the chef's hat, which you can put on Jacob and make sure that he goes into the mess hall 100% of the time if he is in the pool. But the problem with that is that it's only available in the Hoshiden accessory shop, so it's not available in Conquest at all for some reason and it costs a lot of Hoshiden resources, so actually getting the chef's hat will require you to either hack in infinite resources or do a lot of online my castle visiting if you're on console. Yeah, and uh, don't forget about the arena too, that is very yeah. good for farming resources. Do we just need like 50 total resources to get the chef's hat though? It's excessive. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well from the, the level 3 arena you need like 9? the most you can get is you put in one and you get eight out so that's a total of plus seven i think right yes so getting to the sheer number of resources that you need for a chef's hat is just going to be a lot of grinding and a lot of resetting for rng which uh you probably don't want to do so what a lot of players do is just take the fire emblem faith save editor fef twiddler and use that to give Jacob the chef's hat accessory. Or if you want to buy it manually, you could you could just give yourself all the resources yeah. through that uh, save editor as well. But again, if you do that, you'll still need to wait for the availability of the level 3 accessory shop, and hmm. that will take a while. I think it's in the chapter 20s or something, so you only really yeah. get access to it in the very end of the game. One very nice thing about Jacob being one of the best chefs in the game is that, as mentioned before, the only other amazing, like, exquisite cooks are Perry, Percy, and Anna. Anna is a DLC unit, and I imagine that a lot of Fates players probably never really go out of their way to grab her. And then Perry and Percy are only available in Conquest and Revelation, so in Birthright, you're not able to have those as your chef, you're only able to have Jacob. I should also mention that if you want to re-roll your chef and you don't have the chef's hat accessory, another way you can do that is by playing something like a skirmish or a DLC map if you really, really just want to re-roll who that chef is. Uh, you can also do it by waiting like half a day by changing your clock on your Nintendo PC I'm not sure if it works on 3DS. Do you know? Um, I know a lot of 3DS games have a detection for it. I'm not yeah. sure if Fates does. So by waiting half a day of real life time, you can effectively re-roll everyone that's in the RNG My Castle spots, which is a way to re-roll a bad meal if you don't want to hack your 3DS or cheat resources or the chef's hat in. 
I should also mention that when you're working with a Jacob meal, the extra stat that it rolls is also RNG dependent. So let's say you have a strength and a defense ingredients. The extra plus two boost that you get on top of that can be something like magic or skill or luck or resistance, but you cannot directly control it outside of just continuing to re-roll with the same ingredients and spending even more of your ingredients to get more meals to roll the dice even more. Notably, for luck and skill, there are no ingredients that actually boost those stats, so the only way that you can actually get them is through the random extra stat bonus from the exquisite meal. Yeah. So if you want to save on your ingredients, I do recommend leveling up to the level 3 mess hall. The level 2 mess hall allows you to put in two ingredients to boost two stats, while the level 3 mess hall ensures that every single unit in your army benefits from meal bonuses, rather than the half of the army that benefits from the level 1 and level 2 mess halls. Yeah, the, the level 1 and 2 mess halls are super annoying to deal with. I know a lot of people just don't bother with them. I personally don't either, because it's it's just a mess trying to get the, uh, the, the right units to get the right stats. And the level 3 mess hall just completely fixes that. Yeah. Um, the only other point where you could accidentally waste some resources is if Jacob fails his cook, which yeah. can happen, but it's not overly common yeah and i should also mention another my castle shenanigan you can do so we mentioned that meals only benefit half your army but i believe that the total army counts every single unit you have recruited including things like capturables so if you capture the maximum number of units per map and recruit them immediately by like shooting resources or doing a bunch of my castle visiting abuse. It is possible to dilute the pool of your playable units so that you can have so many units that the chances of getting the meal bonus on more characters is slightly higher. There's also the Iron Harrier shop, which um, if you don't want to bother with like using a Rochi or something to, to capture all these characters you can also just buy a bunch of like you know shrine maidens from yeah. from the inherior shop and, and just uh get your meals up that way it's generally not the most efficient use of your money or your real life time but it is technically something that can be done yeah it's like <laughs> at, at this point you're just try harding if you're doing that but yeah. um <laughs> It, it is it is something you can do if you really want to. Jacob is also pretty nice in that if he's not in the mess hall, he also benefits the weapon shop and the rod shop because he does have access in Butler to shurikens and staves, which means he does put those two items on sale. It, it's especially nice to get a discount for for rods in in the context of birthright because yeah. rods I would I value a lot more. Than, than staves, yeah. which is the Norian counterpart, because rods have one to two range, yes. which is much, much easier to use. I believe it heals for a little bit less than the the Norian ones, but like that's that's not going to ever really matter too much. And Birthright also has Bible Rescue and the Hexing Rods, if you want to increase the number of chances you have to hex the final bosses. And having a natural sale on, on daggers is also really good because daggers are one of, if not the best weapon type in Birthright. And having an, another unit that can give you a discount on that with the already like surplus of units that start in a dagger class, it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it really helps you with building your mega forges. Sometimes people want to get your iron shurikens to like plus three or maybe even plus four if you're really feeling it. It can help to meet benchmarks and having your shurikens on sale just makes it easier to reach the amounts of iron shurikens that you need to buy in order to get those mega forges. Jacob only gets one extra class from Friendship, and that is Archer through Takumi. And Archer isn't the worst class for Jacob to get. He does get Quick Draw and Certain Blow if he chooses to go to Sniper. Quick Draw, of course, is plus 4 damage on player phase, and Certain Blow is plus 40 hits on player phase, I believe, right? 
Yes. So I think the best thing he gets out of Takumi's friendship is air superiority. Yes. There's a surprising amount of flyers in the late game of Birthright. There's a ton in Camilla's map. There's a ton in Hans's map. There's not as many in like chapter 25 and 26, but then you get to 27 and there's just an entire group of Wyvern Lords yep. and Malignites, which can be pretty frustrating to deal with if you don't have a good flyer counter. And then he's also very useful in some other specific maps, like um, notably Kiragi's Parallel, oh, yeah. where every single enemy is a flyer yeah if you want to get jacob to the four levels you need to get all four kinchinite skills doing so in kiragi's paralog is probably going to be your best option and he can even stack that with bowfare and just get insane damage output against flyers with perfect accuracy always and he won't even care that he's using a bow because if the flyers decide to attack him at one range with like an axe or a tome or something he'll just dodge yeah and then he gets at level 15 in kenshi knight he gets amaterasu uh, i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly yeah. <laughs> which is another aura skill it's a healing aura skill i believe wh what is it 15 percent to all units within two range uh 20 percent of healing oh. within two spaces at the start of the turn yeah pretty good yeah. It's like discount renewal, so, but for an aura, which is crazy. Yeah, it's really good. It's like, take a lot of the damage reducing auras that Jacob is already having with Jantium, with Inspiration, with Evasive Partner, and even compare that with like Live to Serve. He can just put on Amaterasu and you now have not only Jacob who can just get a lot of free healing on himself but he can also just get a lot of free healing on the units around him which does devalue live to serve i guess a little bit yeah but it's still it's still like a very very strong set of skills that he can have better yet instead of live to serve he could probably put on aegis or put on air superiority He'll, he'll just be fine. Yeah. And of course, I shouldn't underestimate Quick Draw's utility. There is no such thing as overkill damage in late game birthrights because some of the enemies that you'll be facing are extremely bulky. Like the Wyvern Lords, if you're going at them with shurikens, you are probably not going to win around them unless you've like super invested in damage stacking. If you've like gotten like energy drops in a unit, then maybe you can win rounds, but otherwise it's very difficult and being able to just deal plus four damage per hit on player phase is really nice. Yeah, and especially pair that with the other player phase oriented skill being certain blow. He's going to have that plus four damage applied with perfect accuracy. Yes. Almost always. And if you even want to take that further, you can add, let's say, air superiority against a flying unit, <laughs> and then you get a plus 40 hit stack on player phase, and then a plus 30 hit stack from air superiority. So you're getting a 70 hit yeah. for free. And then you can even take it further. You can go with Defender for plus one skill on pair up. You can go uh, skill plus two. Like, <laughs> um, he's he's he has a lot of really great player phase options, especially for dealing good damage consistently. Yeah, which is always valuable. And Bowfair does exist. It's probably not a skill that you want to be using on Jacob if you're using him as one of your carries, but if you want to do support Jacob, Bowfair can help killing off those straggler wyvern lords that stay alive after your master ninjas and mechanists have done their enemy phase on them. Yeah, Bowfair is nice because, especially if he's in Archer and Kenshi, he might struggle to do enough damage to one round and kill any of the super bulky units. Yeah. So that even just like makes it even more consistent. Yeah. Um, especially if he hasn't ever gone to like Cavalier to grab elbow room or something. Um, it can also significantly help with his dual strikes, which can be nice. Yes. If he's like doing like aura Kenshi Knight 
or something. Although getting to the Archer class in the first place is kind of difficult because Jacob is probably going to be a support unit for most of the game and Takumi is going to be a player phase unit for most of the game. So pairing those two units together and getting them to a support is probably going to take a while and a lot of extra work on Jacob's part. <laughs> Yeah, they have a lot of, like, like they have really bad synergy with each other. Yeah. One thing that is nice, though, is that in Butler, Jacob does have speed on pair up, and Takumi does like getting speed. That is so true. It's not the worst option. He, he, he There's definitely uh, worse routes he could go. And then his friendship with Silas... I, I do want to mention is actually pretty good because Silas is one of your earlier units in Birthright, so you can start working on uh, Jacob's support with Silas very early on, which can help you not need a Heart Seal to get Jacob in a Cavalier class if you want to go that route with him. And that is always nice. That's It's just never a bad thing to have an um, alternative option, especially in Birthright. And Silas actually doesn't hate being or getting the Troubadour class because it does still give him access to 1-2 Brain Shurikens in the form of Butler, which isn't that far off from Master Ninja or ne Mechanist in terms of stats. Of course, it does hurt his physical bulk, but... He does still have a good amount of strength, I think actually higher than in Master Ninja as a butler. It also helps shore up his resistance, which is probably one of his bigger shortcomings when it comes to late game. So of course he has the standard male marriage options in Birthrights. So is there anything here that stands out to you? I know there are two in particular that are probably his best options. Yeah, so his best options, I guess we'll cover the first one here. So Kagero gives him ninja. You mentioned this a little bit. Jacob loves ninja. Yes. Um, most units do. In the ninja class, he gets lock touch, poison strike, which is like, okay, just basic utility skills, which can be actually pretty nice for Jacob, especially if he wants to go like a general debuffer route. But then he also has access to shuriken breaker. Oh, shuriken fair. Sorry, sorry. It's a constant plus five damage stack when using usually if he's in master ninja or butler or mechanist he's probably going to be using a shuriken and because of the fact that he starts in butler he will already have like good shuriken rank probably built up by this point um by the point he gets married so he will benefit a lot from that he doesn't benefit too much from lethality because it's just a bad proc skill he doesn't have a bad skill stat, so he's like he can probably use it a few times. It's probably not going to be one of your top five skills by the time you're getting him married, though, which is another issue. Yeah. But the skill that you really want to be going into Ninja 4 is access to early replicates. Now, in Conquest, yes. it's kind of a meme to have Ninja Core and marry Jacob to get early replicate for like chapter 10 but in birthrights you don't have to waste your corn marriage in order to get early replicates because jacob and felicia can marry the ninjas so in jacob's case it is very very nice for jacob to get replicate early on in birthright first of all a replicate is just good it, it gives you an extra unit yeah <laughs> that's that's never bad it will allow you to do a lot more things in a lot more places that you normally wouldn't be able to do uh, that replicate goes a long way paired with what other skills the first servant will probably be able to get. Yeah, it notably allows him to basically double the range of his auras. Jontiome and Inspiration in particular are really good for this. He can just exist in two places at once, spreading those auras and being able to benefit way more units that way. Although I should note that two copies of the same aura do not stack with each other. So you can't have a unit under the effect of Jean Dion twice to have minus four damage taken. It does not work that way. Yeah, and another unfortunate thing is that healing auras do not work on replicas at all. So if you get like replicate Azura or any unit with Amaterasu replicate, the replica will not be able to use it. 
only the main unit will. So if you want to do a funny like Kenshi Knight into Replicate Jacob, it's not as good as it sounds, but there are still some reasons that you may want to do that. Yeah, there is a lot of Replicate tech. Uh, I know that if you're still going to be in a staff class, Live to Serve really does get buffed because Replicas share a health pool with the original units, so healing someone with your replica will heal your main Jacob and the other way around too. So you can just remote heal a Jacob on the front lines without having to spend your player phase action using your item, which is really nice. Yeah, and it also allows for crazy things like you can have your replicate Jacob heal himself and then you can have like your main combat Jacob go fight enemies. Yeah. And you won't have to worry about having a healer nearby because Jacob just does everything by himself. And of course, you can also just spend another backline healer's action healing your replica Jacob so that your main Jacob gets to fall and your replica Jacob can use Raleigh Resistance or something. And if you want to do this, if you're having trouble trying to apply his personal skill, to Corin, what you can do is you can grab Replicate and then you can pair up one of the Jacobs to Corin, and then have the other one go do other Jacob things. Yeah. And there's even more Replicate tech because in addition to an HP pool being shared, the other stats are also shared. So if your backline Jacob is affected by something like a rally or inspiring song, that buff will still be applied to the main frontline Jacob, which can be really nice because when you're two rounding enemies, it's more difficult to get those kinds of buffs on your second enemy phase. And just being able to continue to get those buffs in opportunities where other units can't can be really nice. You can also do things like switching weapons with your backline units in order to make sure that you can use a player phase weapon and a different enemy phase weapon with Jacob. I think probably one of the funniest uses of Replicate is that he can apply rallies and auras to himself. Oh yes, yeah. So one of the downsides of having all these accesses to auras and rallies and stuff is the fact that he can't use them on himself. But if he gets Replicate, he can apply inspiration to himself. He can apply Amaterasu to himself. He can apply Rally Resistance to himself. And he actually does like Rally Resistance. Yeah. And so just having replicates, even with his late game stat deficiencies, will allow him to have niches over your other combat carries just because of this cool tech they can do with like using a Yumi to shoot down a Wyvern Lord and then just switching back to your 1-2 range Shuriken for enemy phase. It's really nice. I, I do know that um, this this was a, a conquest run, but I believe Jarvis C did a full conquest run where he only used oh, Replicate yeah. Jacob. Yeah. And it was the most incredible thing ever because it's just two Jacobs soloing the entire game. Yep. And... Um, he can just do that because he gets replicate in like the first like four levels he's in mechanist yep it is crazy broken other niche uses of it can generally be like if you want to go this way you can put lock touch on your replicate jacob and you can have one of the jacobs go around unlocking all the chests and stuff while you have your main jacob doing like actual support or combat or something yeah really the possibilities are endless and technically you can have two jacobs on the front line soloing everything like jarvis C does Although, in Birthrights, that's a little bit worse just because of the sheer number of enemies that will be taking chunks out of Jacob's health. Especially because Birthright is a lot more mean to daggers than Conquest is. Conquest is very nice to dagger units, however, in, in Birthright, you may find yourself struggling a little bit. One boon that he does get in Birthright is that he has the Dual Shuriken. Yes. Which completely inverts weapon triangle advantage and then doubles it. So he will have very good accuracy against even like axe guys, like against Hans's entire map, basically. Yeah. He will just 
destroy everything. And if you have a pest key like your general or great knight that you want to take out, in addition to having, you can just use your thing shuriken on player phase, and then with your other Jacob, switch back to your dual shuriken. It's really nice. So yeah. Ninja is probably one of his best marriage options through Kagero. But what is the other good marriage option? So, the other good marriage option, out of everything here, it is probably Hana. Yes. So Hana gets him access to the Samurai class line, which gives him a very wide assortment of very, very, very good skills. Yes. <laughs> he gets Vantage, which is... As we've discussed in previous discussions, probably the best defensive skill in the entire game. It basically gives you an extra chance to build guard gauge or get one last attack in on an enemy as they're about to attack into you, which can oftentimes save your life. Yes. Especially if you are able to kill that enemy using vantage before they can kill you. And thankfully, the Samurai class line has two very high damage stacking skills that allow for that, being Sword Fair and Life and Death. Yep. So Sword Fair gives you plus five damage whenever using a sword, and then Life and Death is a constant plus 10 damage taken and then plus 10 damage dealt to every round of combat, which may sound kind of sketchy, but if you combine that with Vantage, the damage dealt will end up helping Jacob more than hurting him. Because he already has access to more damage stacking skills in Elbow Room, in Defender, he will very likely be able to reach the point where he can one-shot almost every enemy in the game. And if you want to go all the way with like a Fighter Talent Corrin as his backpack to give him crazy para bonuses on top of things like supportive then you can pretty easily get him to start one-shotting most of the game as soon as you get vantage life and death sword fair online and swords in birthrights you'd think are not good if you play a lot of conquests but in birthrights you have access to the kodachi which is one to range not only do you have access to it you can forge it yes Forging in Fates is very, very good. Basically, if you buy a weapon and then buy a copy of that weapon, you can basically merge them. You increase its might, you increase its hit. Um, I think you increase something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, crits for weapons that have it. But Kodachi is luckily in that it does not have crits, which means more of its bonuses are being applied to its might, which is really good if you want to mega forge a Kodachi for one-shotting. Yeah, it will end up, especially thanks to the fact that the late game in Birthright really loves swords. They're yeah. so nice to swords. There's a lot of bow guys, there's a lot of axe guys, or there's a lot of like tome or like sword-based enemies that are just like neutral on the weapon triangle. Very rarely will you actually be fighting at weapon triangle disadvantage, and the few times that you might, they are in very like controlled spaces where you can just probably switch to an axe for one turn and be fine. Yeah, and they're usually like great knights or generals, in which case you can probably just have your dedicated dagger carries use the Sting Shuriken and you'll probably be fine. Or if you want to go super crazy, you can just keep, uh, ooh, no, Viable Rescue exists. Oh, so what, yeah. What you, you, can do, you can do something crazy. Like you can have Jacob kill with a one range locked weapon, have someone fly in, trade him back to the Kodachi, rescue them out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As for the other skills that he gets in uh, Samurai, he probably won't ever see use of them. Duelist Blow would actively hurt him because it will make it harder for him to actually set up Vantage. Setting up Vantage is probably one of the more difficult things to do when you're doing one of these builds. There are reliable ways to do it. I've done it with Super Kagero, but it does require more planning than you would expect than just walking in and killing all the things because if the first enemy just kills you first with a dual strike, then what are you going to do? Luckily, Jacob's strongest sword class is Great Knight, so he has very high defense. Yes. But there is always the risk of 
accidentally being in range of a tome unit. Since uh, we, we, we talked all this hype about the Kodachi, Kodachi cannot proc skills. Yeah. It cannot crit. Astra is completely useless. I guess seal strength is nice if you're trying to like debuff for other units, but... Ideally, if you're using Vantage Life and Death, you're probably going to be killing them in one hit anyways. So it's it's very useless. Like, you can't seal a unit's stats if the unit doesn't exist. It's effectively a useless skill. And with Vantage, Life, and Death, he will probably be doing this in guard stance, which means that he will have access to the guard gauge, which will be able to protect him from every, I think it's fifth or sixth enemy that he kills. Yes. Assuming he's one-shotting, it's every fifth enemy. Assuming... He's not one shotting, it would be every third enemy. Though assuming he's not one shotting, he's probably dead yeah. by the third enemy. <laughs> so that will help against the things like the Great Knights and the Generals. If you have a full guard gauge and you're only going to be taking on one of them on any given enemy phase, then you will be able to survive the encounter. Uh, for the most part, though, he'll probably. There's, there's not a lot of like super super bulky enemies in comparison to the damage the sheer damage output that a vantage life and death great knight can pull out yeah so he may, he may even be able to one shot like generals and stuff and i'm sure after a hexing rod he'll be able to kill the final boss and garen as well absolutely yeah he definitely will so yeah with those two more broken options out of the way, is there anything else that looks particularly interesting? So, Felicia's pretty cool. So, the interesting quirk that Fates has is if you pair two units that start in the same base class together. I know it, it may seem like Jacob and Felicia aren't in the same class because one's a butler, one's a maid, but those are just the gendered versions of the same promotion, so they're counted as the same class. Fates will not give the partner seal class as the unit's base class if the unit that's receiving it is already like in that class or already has like access to that class as their base. So instead of getting Troubadour from Felicia, he would get Felicia's heart seal class, which is Mercenary. And Mercenary is one of the rarest classes in the game. Yeah, I think it's only available to Silas and Felicia in Birthright, right? Yeah, that's correct. I guess Sophie. But yeah, so Mercenary, it gives you a lot of really good options. It gives you Stronger Post, which is plus three damage on enemy phase. Which is when most combat is going to be happening. <laughs> yeah. Notably, it gives you Axe Breaker and Shuriken Breaker. Shuriken Breaker isn't as useful because there's like no Shuriken units in the later parts of Birthright. But Axes are rampant yes and you will fight so so many of them but if you get axe breaker and then you have tome breaker from butler that is two of the more prominent weapons just completely dealt with because it gives you 50 avoid and 50 hit against all units using an axe or all units using a tome and that will allow him to reach perfect dodge rates on major portions of the game. Late game Birthright loves spamming Berserkers against you, and just being able to have perfect dodge against them, being able to send Jacob in a cluster of them, having them all attack because in Birthrights, they don't care that they will deal zero damage or have a 0% chance of hitting, they will still attack you. Sending Jacob into a cluster of Berserkers and just being able to deal with them without having to think about it is really nice. Yeah, and on the few units that will still probably be able to hit Jacob, the mercenary class line, before you get Axe Breaker from Hero, you have to get Soul. Yes. Uh, Soul is a self-healing proc skill that is a skill percent, percent chance to heal half of your damage dealt. So if you're dealing 20 damage in a single attack, you're healing 10 back to yourself if you proc the skill. And that makes him almost invincible. Yeah. In the context of Birthright, Soul is probably one of the best skills in the game just because of how much enemy phasing you will be doing. 
being able to survive without as much support just because you are able to heal yourself is crazy. And only like two units get this by default, Silas and Felicia, and they still need to heart seal for it. So getting soul on another one of your potentials for a carry unit is crazy. Yeah, and then there's also, you have to get good fortune, too, in order to reach a soul first, because good fortune is the mercenary level 1 skill, meaning that if you go into that class at all and level up, you will get the skill. Yeah. Restores up to 20% HP at the start of each turn, trigger percent equals luck stat. So he will just have that like very small chance at getting a little bit of extra self-healing if you want that extra safety net, yeah. which is never going to be a bad thing, especially if you don't have other skills to fill those skill slots. And if he goes down the path of Bow Knight, he can add to his supporting role with Rally skill, which is really nice because a lot of your magical units are going to be in Oni Chieftain by the time you're in late game birthright, and being able to fix up their hit rates by a bit really does help. Rally skill gives plus six hits from its plus four skill, which does help when you're trying to get Hayato and Rajat and Rinka to actually kill what's in front of them so you can actually move forward instead of trying to pick off all your stragglers. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of like low skill units in Birthright too. I would say that Rally skill is probably one of the more valuable rallies in the game. Yeah. And the fact that so few units get it make the characters that do happen to get it a lot more desirable to use. And by marrying Felicia, Jacob becomes part of that group. Yes. And he's, I think, the only unit that gets mercenary through marrying Felicia. So... You're only expanding the number of units that can get Raleigh's skill by doing this marriage, which is nice. As for his other marriage options, the only other one that really sticks out, to me at least, is Sakura. Yeah. So in Monk, he's able to get Rally Luck and Rally Magic. Yes. Which can further help his supportive capabilities. And then he can also get things like Counter Magic, Renewal, and Miracle, which are all selfish skills, but they help his survivability a lot, which as a result will help him help other units a lot more. Just having more rallies on a single unit can help with roll compression because Especially on turn one, you're going to have all your units in one cluster anyways, and being able to not have to deploy an extra, say, Orochi in order to get your Rally Magic is very helpful, because your deployment slots in late game birthrights can sometimes be restrictive once you've got everyone and their pair partners going out in the front lines. The, the nice part about also going into Monk Omiyoji is that he will get Tome Fair as the, the, the level 15 skill. So his dual striking isn't actually going to be that bad. His damage output in general isn't going to be that bad, especially with his like okay magic growth and base. If he's already gone into Strategist at some point in the run, then he's already going to have a bit of Tome Rank built up, which is always going to be nice. Yeah. And he does keep his Staff Rank too in Omiyoji, so it's just never, <laughs> like, it's never going to be a bad option for him. Yeah, it does really set him up very well to end the game as a Strategist, being able to have Tome Fair to boost the damage of the Horse Spirit that you're using to bulk boost his bulk is really nice in minimizing the number of units that will attack him. Because if you have him next to like a shuriken user, maybe like a wyvern lord might not want to attack a tome user and will instead go to the shuriken user that you want to be sponging hits to begin with. And one other class that I think is interesting, or at least funny, is Oni Savage, because it gives him access to a salvage blow Salvage Blow is luck percent chance to get an iron version of the weapon that the unit that you're killing on player phase has equipped, which does help with gold a bit. Yeah, I actually didn't even consider that. Uh, he gets Salvage Blow so early on yeah. compared to every other unit that you can get that on him pretty early. Rinka's a very early unit. Jacob's a very early unit. You can start building their support very quickly. You can get 
Jacob to salvage blow in basically one map. Yeah. And he'll he'll basically allow you to forge like plus fours, plus fives, maybe, if you're not even selling the iron weapons, which Honestly, I recommend you sell the iron stuff, unless it's like an iron shuriken. And in Birthright, unfortunately, I don't think there are any infinite reinforcement maps that use physical weapons. I think it's just faceless. But if you're using Jacob to get player phase kills to get extra money, that might not be the worst use of your Jacob action. <laughs> Just because unlike Profiteer, it is still active until the end of the map, not just the first seven turns. So you can use it to get as many weapons as you want over the course of a map. Yeah, especially if you try to do like a super carry Jacob, it, it might be pretty hard with Oni Savage Jacob, but he will see quite a significant amount of combat, especially if you end up actually wanting to go Oni Chieftain. He'll get 1-2 range, he'll get tomes, which is not terrible. Yeah. He'll also get access to death blow, which I guess can help. Yeah, because salvage blow is player phase only, so helping his player phase damage does help. Um, counter would actually be pretty nice for that too, because if you keep his damage output on enemy phase low, you can have the enemies effectively damage themselves Yeah. Um, and set up a kill for him, which is always nice. Another one of those units with low enough defense that counter actually does something. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe not an Oni Chieftain though, yeah. you might want to reclass into something else. Yeah. And Lancebreaker probably isn't going to be your most useful skill on Jacob. Uh, it does help against like Generals and Great Knights, but you're probably going to have better options for his skill slot. If you're willing to do like skip strats for late game birthright, Shove does also have uses. I know you need shove users to skip, uh, I believe it's chapters 24 and 25 in one turn. So Jacob does have utility in there. Yeah, and if you um, if you do it like super, super early, you can probably get Jacob to do the chapter 17 one turn as well. Oh yeah. The more I think about it, I don't really hate Obero as an option. Yeah. Because he can get really early Quixotic, and Quixotic is a very, very good skill. It is, I believe, plus 30 to your hit rates yes. and the enemies you fight. Yes. Um, and then it's a plus 15% chance to all skill activations. And the cool thing about that is that in order to get Quixotic, you need to get Rend Heaven. And Rend Heaven is one of the more highest probability proc skills in the game. It's skill times 1.5. Jacob already has very high skill, so he's probably going to be proccing that a lot anyways, and that just gets added by 15%, which is crazy. Yeah, and he does also have access to some of the better support skills in the game, which are seal defense and seal speed, which can really help with setting up kills also. Oni Savage, which we mentioned before, gets seal res, which is good for raising up your bad magic units. And much like Oni Savage, like it gets shove, Spearfighter gets swap. Yes. So you can use some swap strategies with Jacob if you really want to, if you want your Obero to be doing something else on the side, if you're trying to do like LTC stuff. You probably won't be finding much of a use for Lance Fair just because your options for 1 2 range and lances is limited to the. Uh, Bolt Naginata and the one javelin that Silas comes with in his inventory in Birthright. So that other units are probably going to want more than Jacob too. Yeah. So you're probably not keeping him using lances as his primary weapon. But Spearfighter is not his worst reclass option for marriage. His worst would in fact be Mozu and Setsuna yeah. who give him Archer, which is just completely redundant. Yes. Don't uh, like, Mozu and Setsuna probably don't even really care too much about Jacob's support. Mozu does get made, which you could do a lot worse for Mozu's marriage options. That's true. But Setsuna just does not care. Setsuna already has ninja anyway, so if yeah. you want to put her in a dagger class, just put her in the good one. Yep. And then Azura and Hanoka are much like in the same boat, except I would say even more so than Mozu and Setsuna because marrying Azura is funny for Dwyer. Not Dwyer, sorry. It's it's funny for Shigure, but oh, yeah. in the context of, like, Jacob specifically, it is 
uh, it's not going to help him at all. It does let him get the extra rally in speed. That is true. But you probably have enough rally speed users in your party to begin with, so... Yeah. Anything else you want to say about, like, I think the only one we haven't covered is Diviner, but I don't think anyone cares about Diviner. Yeah, <laughs> who would ever? I mean, it's basically just like Monk, but again, yeah, worse Monk, really. Yeah. We should probably also talk about the uh, practicality of Jacob's marriage options. So, of course, his two big ones are Samurai and Ninja from Hana and Kagero, but Samurai is a lot more available for Jacob than Ninja is because Hana joins as soon as chapter 7, but Kagero only joins in chapter 11, which has probably also occurred after you've completed Paralogue 1 and Invasion 1. So Hana has a very big lead in her ability to build supports with Jacob in the early game. Yeah, I would say that Jacob aims the strongest as uh, Hana as his marriage option, just because of the the sheer power of uh, an, an early life and death vantage sword fairy in it. Yeah. So marrying Hana is a lot more desirable. However, there are a lot of good qualities that Hana has that she may want to give to other units. Yes. Like, let's say, for example, she's a very fast unit, right? And yeah. Hinata isn't. She may want to marry Hinata to fix his speed a bit. She may want to help out with Azama's speed or skill. She's a very, very good mother. Yeah. Um, so she'll give a lot of good stats to a lot of kids. And I feel like Dwyer is one of the kids that benefits the least from Hana. Yeah. So it may not always be like the best option to go have Hana marry Jacob for the sake of Hana herself. Yeah. I'm less so concerned about Jacob. And in situations where that is the case, I feel like then you may want to start looking at Kagero as your marriage option. Yeah. Because at that point, it's like, well, Hana's taken care of. You don't have Felicia recruited yet. You don't have, like, like Obero's probably wanting to do something else. Sakura probably doesn't care a whole lot about Jacob marriage. Yeah. Because she already is in, I, I would say, a better healing class. So yeah, Kagero is another pretty so, yeah. good option. It's just a solid option. Another thing about going for early life and death Jacob is that... It makes him pretty greedy when it comes to experience because anytime that you're sending Jacob into a group of units, they're going to be dying and not leaving experience for your other units, which means you're probably going to want him to be using him a lot more sparingly than a lot of your other units. It does give him the benefit of yeah. not having to be deployed for as many maps to keep up with the experience curve, but if he's not keeping up with the experience curve, then he won't be one-shotting enemies, and that is not ideal for Vantage Life and Death. Yeah, he will need a lot stronger forges if you're, like, benching him for multiple chapters in a row. One good thing that Birthright has is, I believe, throughout the campaign of Birthright, you get, like, four strength drops or something yeah. crazy like that. So it's not, like, completely unreasonable to, like, spare one of them for Jacob, or even uh, give him one of the many arm scrolls that you get in Birthright to increase his damage stack from sword rank. But yeah, aside from that, there's a lot of downsides that do come from Vantage Life and Death. Like, it it's really easy for him to start snowballing into the best unit in the game. Yes. Which will just, like, leave all of your units in the dust it will make you not want to use any other unit which will end up making the game in my opinion a little less fun yeah and the benefit of marrying jacob to kagero is that replicate allows him to enhance his support roles in addition to his combat roles so being able to replicate lets him spread more auras do more rallies and heal more often than he otherwise would which will help you raise your other units a lot better which in a game like Birthright is probably something that you really want to be doing because like, it's not like we're playing this game for the challenge. Yeah. One thing that I, I feel like we've neglected to mention too is that he gives level 15 skills to Dwyer yes. without 
doing so much as lifting a finger. Yeah. He will give what, like, Dwyer can basically just get anything he would ever want for free. Yeah. Um, very fitting given the story of his paralogue. Yeah. Um, especially in the case of if he marries Azura, he's going to give level 15 skills to Shigure as well. Yes. The funny meme build that I sometimes like doing is giving Jacob replicates and giving uh, Corrin marriage and giving Corrin Raleigh defense from Scarlet. So that way <laughs> That's awesome. you can pass Raleigh defense replicates to both Kana and Dwyer. Oh no, this doesn't work. I'm so sad. <laughs> I, I was thinking hmm, maybe he could get replicates and then he could... Oh no, it does work with Corrin. Never mind. Okay, so Corrin gets Demoisel. Oh. Jacob gets Jontium. <laughs> or no, Dwyer gets Jontium naturally. Yeah. So you can have a replicate... Jean Tium Demoiselle inspiration unit. <laughs> so that's just constant minus four damage taken to every unit in the game. Yeah. Which is really funny. We've been talking about Jacob so far as if he's the first unit that you get in the game outside of Korn. But that is not always true because if you choose female Korn, you will get Jacob as your servant. But if you choose male Korn, then Jacob will come at the end of chapter 15 instead. He comes with auto levels in Butler, which leaves him with these base stats if you haven't trained him up in the Branch of Fates. Yeah, so in chapter 16, when he will first join you as the second servant, he will be level 13 if he's completely untrained, as a butler. However, if you have a female Corrin in the first five chapters of the game and then switch to male Corrin at the route split, then the levels that Jacob obtained throughout chapters two and three stay on Jacob. They just get added on top of the 13 auto levels that Jacob already gets from being the second servant. So he can join at level 15 or like very close to level 15, one level up will get him just an instant level 15 skill. Or he could even already just join with Tonebreaker. If you so please, you can immediately reclass him out of that uh, class to start building next towards other things. I actually don't like changing Korn's gender to give late Jacob two more levels because it really does hurt his ability to get the early level 15 skills because you still need to get through the first three levels in order to get the level 1, the level 10, and the level 5 skill. So having the boosted experience gain of being at a lower level I think helps him more than starting at a higher level. That is true, but I do think there is some good merit to having Tonebreaker by the time Jacob joins because like he will join after chapter 15 yeah. and we did previously mention that in chapter 16 it is tomes everywhere there's two rooms in particular there's one like the northern room and then Iago's room oh yeah that are yeah. only mages yeah and a lot of them are like promoted sorcerers where even like your master ninjas can kind of struggle yeah. um, a little bit if you're not careful, but Jacob can just, it's really good. And because he has a general like, low damage output, he probably won't be killing them, at least the promoted ones. So out the box, he's actually pretty strong as the second servant because he, he just helps you feed your other units a lot. One really, really unfortunate thing is that on his join map, if you want to pursue his friendship with Takami, he has to wait an extra map. <laughs> True. Um, because Takami is not available in Chapter 16. Yeah. And of course, if you want to make Jacob one of your carries, recruiting him in late game is going to be particularly bad for building his skills because he has way fewer maps to build supports with units like Kagero or... Hana or Takumi. Yeah, the unfortunate thing with him as the second servant is it's a lot harder to stack skills on him because he will need to like go through a paralog chain if you're not like 
allowing grind maps in your run because by the time he gets his like marriage let's say he wants to marry kaguro if you only use the story maps for that he has to go through chapter 16 for his c support and then 17 and 18 for his b support 19 and 20 for his a support and then 21 and 22 for his s support so the earliest he would be able to get into his partner seal class is chapter 23 which is just way too late to be useful so if you want to like super stack skills on jacob it's ideal that you either do a paralog chain or you just have him as your first servant yeah and even doing a paralog chain for jacob is a little sketchy because paralogs provide a lot of experience in birthright yeah uh, a lot of the the birthright paralogs are very similar to how shared route paralogs are where there's all these like normal leveled units and then scattered across everywhere there's extremely high level enemies that are ideally like the best to grind off of but in the case of jacob he wants to kind of stay in that low level and it's a lot harder for him to do that and i should also note that the uh, normal level enemies that you were talking about are normal levels in the context of conquest, not birthrights, because the scaling of both of them are the same. And birthright's level curve is actually a lot slower than conquests. So, oh yeah, that's true. You will be going up against enemies that are significantly higher level than the in the main chapters. There is so much more experience to be gained from paralogs that just using them to train Jacob before chapter twenty three is probably not your best use of them. I'd personally suggest using paralog chains to get your units to their level 15 skills after like chapter 24 or maybe 25. Yeah, so I would say with all of that considered, Jacob's best use case as the second servant is to just stay in Butler. Yeah. And he actually does pretty good in it. Since he gets auto levels, he'll actually have auto weapon ranks he will start with c rank and shurikens especially if you train him during the first five maps of the game yeah. which will allow him to immediately be able to use the the flame shuriken which may not sound like completely useful but again having magic weapons forgeable magic weapons in the late game of birthright is not always a bad option especially in maps like chapter 19 where there are many enemies with just zero resistance yep. he also is just like an instant healer by this point in the game there's a good chance that you maybe reclass felicia if she's your first servant because yep. she's probably gotten married or used the heart seal at this point um and then by this point, you've also probably reclassed Azama into a non-human class because he has Mechanist in his base class set. You're probably not using Subaki or Hinoka in Falcon Knight. Yeah. So your big healers are probably just going to be Orochi and Sakura yeah. if she's even being deployed at this point. So having an extra healer is very useful by this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Especially one that comes with free weapon ranks. Yes. Because there are a lot of good, like high rank rods that you can use in this game that you otherwise won't be able to get you do get izana in chapter 18 i guess but one thing that i really like doing in conquest and revelation is recruiting the late game like flora to have her use the offensive staves yes and you can't do that in birthright because of uh story reasons yeah and um Jacob kind of fills that role yeah. pretty well. He is probably going to be your second hexing rod user after your first use misses, which is <laughs> yeah. significantly better than just not having another person at B rank staves or using your sing to get another hexing rod use out. <laughs> another good thing about Jacob using the hexing rod is that his staff hit is actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, he has a lot of skill and his magic, while there's a, like it leaves a bit to be desired, it's good enough and i think i think the skill like really carries him into having a lot more hit than normal he's also a good silence rod user in my experiences i've <laughs> i've actually found multiple cases where silence rod would be very useful to use on jacob in my ongoing attack stance only run oh yeah yeah just shutting down a magic unit 
can sometimes save a Yudas life. The unique thing about the Silence Rod is that it will prevent a magical unit from attacking with magic completely. So if that unit only has tomes, they won't be able to attack. And if a unit can't attack, they probably just won't move. Yeah. So it's it's effectively an alternative version of a free staff, which you can't get in Birthrate. So it's having a, a unit that can just instantly use that right out the box is always going to be nice. Yeah. And late game Jacob can still be used for his personal skill of ace partner for Corrin. He is mm -hmm. still just as good of, as a backpack to Corrin as Jacob one is just because he will still have the same pair of bonuses and personal skill regardless of what level he is. Yeah. And while he does join late, it's going to be a little bit harder for him to be like as aggressive with like applying his auras. He's still going to actually have a lot of opportunity to apply them because unlike Conquest and Revelation, the enemy stats of Birthrate aren't actually very high. So there's a lot less situations that you could put Jacob in that will actually threaten his life in like a meaningful way. So he can like go into enemy lines pretty deep and just apply his order to your like primary combat unit and he will probably be fine. Just make sure that he's not being hit by like more than one or two units and yeah. One good thing is he'll probably not be able to kill back. So if you like, like say in chapter 20 with all of the faceless everywhere yeah. that are just locked to one range, you can have him stand behind or next to a main combat unit. Two faceless will probably go for Jacob, but they won't do enough damage to kill him and he won't do enough damage to kill them. And that'll just completely block anything else off from harming him. And then at that point, he can just live to surf his way back to full health and continue applying his auras. Mm -hmm. So for this video, Blue has taken the time to create for us a few Jacob builds over the course of the game. So you want to talk us through the first one? Yeah, so we have mentioned this before when we were talking about his marriage options, but um, here is what it will actually look like on paper rather than just like talking about it. So this is the Vantage Life and Death Great Knight Jacob. This Jacob is average to be at level 30. All of the builds that I made, I accounted for it being Jacob 2 on the off chance that you want to do this. So he will never reclass earlier than chapter thir or <laughs> chapter level 13 out of Butler. So in this case, I did level 15 Butler and then four levels in Paladin instantly. He can use just the heart seal to do that or Silas's friendship. But in the context of this, it's probably easier to just use a heart seal. And then while he's in Paladin, he can build support with Hana and get S support with Hana and then immediately go into Swordmaster, grab Swordfare Vantage, Master of Arms, grab Life and Death, and then immediately go into Great Knight, which is the strongest sword class in Actually, I think it is. It is the strongest the sword, sword class, class in the game. with yeah. Yeah. It, it's the sword class that has the most raw strength. So, it will just allow him to more reliably one-shot enemies. Here, I have a Kodachi plus three, which may seem excessive, but it actually is pretty necessary for both the extra hit and the extra might. The fact that the Kodachi is on its own a pretty weak weapon, aside from the fact that it's 1-2 range, it means that it's going to need a lot of forges to actually get some meaningful might. And this accounts for specifically Hana pair up. And Hana, while she does give good strength in like Master of Arms, it's definitely not as high as you can get. The highest you can get is with a Corrin backpack, even if you are S supporting Corrin. And I have a demo actually. I have recorded demos of every build that we're about to cover. Links to those will be in the description. I, I tested this one in particular in chapter 23, Camilla's map. He actually one shot every enemy in the yes. game there. Yeah. He even one-shotted Effie. He was able to one-shot Camilla, Baruka, all the Great Knights, all the the Wyvern Lords. Um, there wasn't a single enemy he did not just kill in one hit. And especially in a map like Camilla, Camilla uses Dragon Veins every turn on the area with the most units in it and that will just very very consistently get him 
vantage set up, he won't even have to worry about like, oh, will I actually get hit or will I just dodge this attack or will I get hit by too little damage by one unit and then too much on the second and get killed by accident. You, you just don't have to worry about that in a map like that. And then immediately after you have Hans's map, weapon triangle advantage everywhere. Yep. <laughs> and especially against berserkers and dark mages who which already have pretty low defense he will probably just one shot them anyways uh, the only thing he needs to be a little bit careful about is the generals but as long as you stay out of their ranges and only uh, like engage them on player phase or when you have guard gauge up then you should be safe there's not a whole lot of them grouped up together aside from that one area at the start but it's a defeat boss mission you won't have to engage with them at all yeah once you get later into the game the thresholds do get a bit more demanding for vantage one shotting though but if you do yeah. feed him all of the like energy drops most of his damage is coming from his skills so his strength is still probably not going to be capped by this point so feeding him the energy drops will give him a significant boost and if you're worried about life and death being like too much damage for him and it might be hard to like actually set up the skill for him if you use the kodachi on player phase he will have minus five speed which cuts his avoid and if you want to pair that with the other great knight skill which is armored blow which is minus 10 physical damage you can go in you can like rush in attack like a great knight and it might do just barely enough to set up vantage for him while still keeping at him at like a relatively safe hp amount the only real thing that you have to worry about is like jacob might end up having too much hp yeah but um that's what hp times are for baby <laughs> uh I didn't know that the Kodachi's minus five effective speed reduced your avoid. Is that true? I'm pretty sure it is, right? Huh. I, I'm I'm like 99% sure. If I'm wrong, you can... I can just cut it out, yeah. Yeah. Or you can leave it in for more interaction. <laughs> <laughs> true. Reaching one-shot thresholds in Birthright is pretty difficult if you're a ninja. But if you're a sword user, it's less difficult the units that you have trouble with weapon triangle disadvantage are going to be the generals and great knights which are easier to avoid than the malignant knights and or wyvern lords yeah jacob honestly like worries about that a lot less with sword fair and life and death yeah. and elbow room because with the skill set of elbow room defender sword fair life and death he gets 19 effect effectively 19 strength yeah. Um, from his skills alone. Pair that with his average of 26 strength, and then probably even more from his pair up. It, it just gets to a ridiculous amount of attack. And he'll probably be capable of just clearing out full groups of enemies and notably maps like chapter 27, where like the less bulky like mage area he could probably just clean up while your other units work on other things. I think the biggest thing that he has to worry about is brave weapons, yes. which there are quite a few of in the late game of Birthright, so you might want to be a little bit careful about his positioning. You can't just full brain dead, yeah. but you can get pretty close to brain dead. And I should note that actually soloing the game with a Vantage Life and Death build is very difficult because if you're not planning on doing skip strats, the thresholds you need to meet are extremely high. The generals in chapter 27 have 56 HP and 35 defense, the berserkers have 60 HP and 17 defense, and the great knights have 53 HP and 32 defense. So you're going to have some trouble getting to those benchmarks. Actually going in and one-shotting every enemy in the game probably is not going to happen though, even if you full commit to stacking Jacob. Unless you can get like a Kodachi plus seven, at which point, well, okay. I mean, that that's, that's wraps. <laughs> I mean, 
You, you can't even do that because level three sh like Kodachis are limited. I'm pretty sure. Unless you yeah, get very shots. lucky with the lottery, uh, 255 times. But yeah, you mentioned that it may be hard to kill some of the berserkers and stuff. But uh, this next build fixes that completely. Yep. Uh, so this is a build I dubbed Invincible Jacob because it makes Jacob invincible. Um, <laughs> He gets level 15 in Butler for Tome Breaker. While he's getting to the Tome Breaker, he can build his A plus support with Takami. This is before Felicia joins, which will be the marriage option for this build. So while he's waiting on Felicia to join, he can build a support with Takami and then go into Kenshi Knight to grab air superiority. And then after he grabs air superiority for the plus 30 hit stack and avoid stack, against all flying units he goes into hero and in hero he grabs good fortune strong repost soul and axe breaker so now he has plus 50 to hit and avoid against all units that use an axe which is notable against berserkers who will end up having close or actually zero hit on jacob at this point Especially against the Wyvern Lords, who are already getting affected by air superiority. Oh, yeah. Add that to axes, and they will never hit him, even at weapon triangle disadvantage. Jacob will just always dodge them. He will need to go into Bow Knight if you want to go ahead and grab Shuriken Breaker. Honestly, I don't recommend this, but I do think it's funny if you <laughs> just grab it. Yeah. Um... Shuriken Breaker isn't actually that applicable. Are there many paralogs that have Shuriken users? I guess like Asugi's paralog has a few. Asugi's has quite a bit. I know Shiro's has quite a bit. Yeah. But generally in the main story of Birthright, you're not going to be finding many dagger units. There's yeah. like some maids sprinkled around, but they aren't too big in quantity. Yeah. Especially because Birthright likes using strategists a lot yep. too, instead of maids. So you probably like most of the healer units um that the enemies will have aren't even going to be in the class that this will matter for. It will matter for Tome Breaker, but not Shuriken Breaker. But then after you grab Shuriken Breaker, if you want to get it, he can go back into Butler and then he will truly be unstoppable. Yeah. You equip Soul for the free healing on the few enemies that will actually be able to hit him still. And then you will want to range your way throughout the entire game with self healing and almost perfect dodge rates. In my recorded demo of this, I have it in chapter 24. Even against the Lance users that have weapon triangle over him, he will have like close to 40 avoid against them all. Wow. Which isn't bad at all. And then since he just has no shot of getting hit by any of the other units around him, on player phase, he can either just heal with a concoction or kill off the problem enemies. Yeah. Uh, with like a sting shuriken or just like a strongest weapon and then just enemy phase again yep. he'll be perfectly fine so instead of shuriken breaker it's probably better to have stronger post because his attack probably is not going to be the best by the point of the game where you're using him like this yeah if you want to route in another class i would recommend going to paladin or great knight for one level so that way you can get elbow room instead of stronger post which is just a constant plus three damage instead of only on enemy phase alternatively you could um equip good fortune <laughs> and uh have a little bit of an extra chance at healing yourself which is always nice in a build like this by the time you get to late game birth rate though, 29 attack probably is not going to cut it. And that's with a forged weapon already, so yeah. He, yeah. he does need help in that department. He he needs help with attack, and that's kind of where the avoid comes in. Yeah. Because instead of having the one round enemies, he will pretty comfortably two round them without taking much punishment that other units that tend to two round normally would take there are of course some cases where this build won't be like too useful like against um against like big clumps of like super strong enemies like the the six reinforcement great knights 
and Dark Knights in Chapter 25, he's probably not going to be too stellar in. Yeah. But generally speaking, this is this is a very, very good build, if not a little monotonous, but if you're willing to deal with that. All right. And the next one I see is called Double Trouble. Yeah, so this is... Uh... I wanted to make something that really just played into Replicate and like Mechanist in general because he has a lot of really funny things that he can do with Replicate. And one of the funniest things is that he can do Shuriken Fair Bow Fair Elbow Room, which is a constant plus eight damage stack no matter what weapon he's using. And then uh, he can use Replicate to have that twice <laughs> yep the most practical use for this is being able to use your yumi on player phase where since since you're going through so many classes here if you want to you can apply certain blow to your class set instead of like air superiority to have really good hit with the yumi which is one of the more common criticisms that yumis get and then with your replicate, you can switch to a dagger and then enemy phase with your really good weapon, one, two ranged weapon. And then on the subsequent player phase, let's say you have taken a lot of damage, but you don't have any healing skills on you. You don't have any staves for live to serve either. You can use a concoction or you can run back to one of your other healers with one of your Jacobs, while the other one can stay in the enemy front lines to continue killing everything. So again, as we mentioned before, with Replicate, he can go back to the back lines and also get rallies and things like Inspiring Song for extra stat boosts so that your main Jacob can stay buff for the entire enemy phase. Um, this is not as practical as the first two builds that I have shown, mainly because the the sheer damage stacking and like avoid stacking that this Jacob gets compared to the other two isn't as good generally, but it is still a solid option for decent player phase combat along with uh, some like solid enemy phase opportunity thanks to the replicate skill. Bowfair honestly probably won't do too much help for him. He'll probably mainly want to be using shurikens anyways, as most mechanists do. However, yeah. uh, that's not as funny, so <laughs> you you kind of have to get Bowfair at that point. Plus, it's not always a bad idea to want to go into Sniper anyways, because as mentioned before, the times that you do want to be using Yumi's, Yumi's have pretty low hit, so Certain Blow will actually help out a lot in that case. And then he also gets like a wide variety of other like useful skills here. Like air superiority can help out with his dodge rates a bit and help with some survivability on a few select maps. Same with Aegis and Tome Breaker. And then if you want to, you can apply skill plus two or res plus two or John TM and just like stack either selfish support or selfless support with replicate you really just can't go wrong <laughs> with uh whatever you decide to do with replicate because it's all just so so good yeah i personally like using shelter as my last skill in builds like this because just having the ability to turn your replicas action into another unit's action provides more ways to play the game compared to just having another unit that has stats yeah it's definitely like like a very huge boon that he just gets all this utility and then he gets it twice because of replicate <laughs> and it's yep. like yeah. you like imagine having one of the best utility units in the game and then just like multiplying it it's it's, it's a beautiful sight to see really as for combat this this build in particular really helps out with i would say some of the paralogs in particular so the paralogs are a bit easier than um, the main story chapters in the late game. However, a lot of the weapons that the Paralogs use and a lot of the gimmicks that the Paralog use really plays into the strengths of what this build can do. Especially if you're yeah. doing it like super late game and have it access to the dual shuriken and other like strong 
yumis and shurikens because like on one side of the map you can be fighting uh, a group of generals or something with your sting shuriken and then you can swap to the dual shuriken on your other jacob and then once the generals are dealt with you can now fight all the axe guys and say like chapter 24 or something or you can split up your jacobs taking chapter 24 as another example you can have one of your jacobs go down the left side and then the other one go down the right side and now you have two jacobs that are handling both sides of the map along with probably your other units that you're bringing and it just helps your action yeah. economy so much by having that one extra unit doing those like tiny little bits of combat this jacob is probably in the same vein as like a takami like a standard takami where it's like he'll do very good player phase oriented stuff like picking off enemies or like in the case of jacob here applying his like personal auras or a rally or something and generally it just it just helps the the overall economy of the team replicate really does have that effect <laughs> yeah and i see that you have one more build for us today yes so this is um the previous three builds that i have shown here are more combat focused they are super damage stack heavy they are super skill oriented based on what they can do against the enemies however jacob also has a great quality that we've mentioned plenty of times throughout this discussion, and that is in his support capabilities. So he naturally gets access to the strategist class. So in Butler, he can immediately reclass into strategist and then get to level 15 to grab rally resistance, which is a very, very rare rally that other units probably just won't have unless your name is like Felicia, but... <laughs> If you're using Strategist Jacob, you're not using Strategist Felicia. It's, it's one or the other. And then he can marry Kagero using his support with that to grab Replicate from Mechanist again. And then use his support with Takumi to grab Amaterasu from Kenshi Knight. And then end up going back into Strategist. And that will allow him to have a very uninspiring combat potential. However, a very insane support potential. So the main Jacob, the, the real one, will get to use Amaterasu after every turn. And if you combine that with Inspiration and Jantium and Rally Resistance, you get a lot of damage reduction for your other units and you get a lot of uh, free healing without having to use your staves. Meanwhile, your Replicate Jacob, while your Replica can't use... Amaterasu, he is able to be somewhere else on the map as another support unit. Usually in the late game of most Fire Emblem games, you're probably not deploying more than one or two healers. And in a, especially in the case of Fates, where Fates is a very support-oriented game, you're probably going to want to relegate a lot of the deployment slots to the supports you're building and the fact that jacob can give you a second healer for free after he finishes his support allows you to have basically one less thing to worry about another great use for this is probably he can enemy phase a couple of times before he really gets in danger especially with his high hp and resistance stats against magical enemies and if you have his replicate nearby the real Jacob, then you can apply Amaterasu to himself, which is very, very good. It just basically completely nullifies all his damage taken because usually the damage he will take is already very controlled and probably ideally not going to be too much. So that 20% HP boost that he'll get is... Um, a lot more significant than it may seem. And of course, there's also the option to switch out one of the skills for something like Lift to Serve. If you really want him to be going out into the enemy lines more than like once or twice a map. Yeah, and also there's always air superiority. 
if you are in a more flyer oriented map it's not always a bad idea to just avoid stack uh, to make sure that the enemies are going to prefer attacking into Jacob less. can also apply um, lock touch you can have because of the fact that a strategist Jacob is going to have eight movement minimum you can have one of your replicas just go grab chests that are very far out in the map like in chapter 25 those long hallways with like no enemies and two chests yep you can have one of the Jacobs go grab those chests while your other units actually do things which is just a very nice time saver all around and then his low damage output with scrolls is actually not the worst thing if you want to swap it out uh like swap out one of your skills with like poison strike or something it can help feed some units if you want that are like trying to get level 15 skills themselves because by this point in the game jacob yeah. will be done with his his uh skill getting but a lot of other units may not be because of how his exp works versus everyone else's so he can help accelerate other units just so well using your sword blocked orochi is going to be a fun <laughs> time and jacob definitely makes that uh a little bit more bearable at the very least so yeah there is so much that jacob can do that you really can't say about most other units in the game just due to his leveling of course his stats are not going to be the best but the skills can more than make up for it and make him into one of the best units you have in an entire playthrough so if you want to make jacob one of the focuses of your run and just have him be useful for as much of it as possible i feel like the easiest way to do that is just using your first heart seal on him to make him a paladin to be a second shelter user on top of silas which will allow him to first have eight move and do combat to set up kills for your other units as well as being able to support your team by allowing for more sings which really does help in early game birth rights when you're trying to raise a lot of your weaker units with a lot worse of a start of course you can delay his class change to paladin to whenever you want depending on the needs of your team if you want to use your heart on something else but after he becomes a paladin or great knight, he will want to get into master ninja in order to rush shuriken fair so that he can spend the rest of the game as a mechanist. And at that point, you kind of don't need to spend more resources investing him in him if you want to use him as a primary combat unit. That way, he will have elbow room, shelter, defender, shuriken fair, and replicates getting all the benefits of being able to replicate while also not being quite as high investment as some of the other builds that we mentioned before. Yeah, it, this is definitely one of the easier ways to use Jacob. Like if you want just like a, a standard build, like um, one that isn't super crazy yeah. with the class routing like the other ones are and like super tight on experience, then this is probably one of the better things that you can do. It's just like it's... It's it's not going to be anything as spectacular in its payoff, but it's going to require a lot less brain power to get to where it yeah. is. Three seals while also not being super tight on what levels you do things at is a very big benefit when it comes to birthright, where you're you're probably building a lot of meme units which are going to be very seal heavy. So this is probably the one that you'll be using uh, the most frequently if you're not making Jacob the focus of all of your hyper investments. So how does this compare to some of your other candidates for being a carry in Birthright? So let's compare him to a standard level 5 Master Ninja Saizo. Now to match the amount of investments I put into Jacob, I gave Saizo two seals to get him Vantage and back. So how do they compare? Jacob, as a mechanist, will have a lead of 8 attack on Saizo, but Saizo has a lead of 3 in attack speed. Now, of course, you can just put Jacob into Master Ninja to reduce his attack, but increase his speed. So, as a mechanist, he will have 147 hit compared to Saizo's 156, so 9 less hits, 8 less avoid, 8 less dodge, 
two less defense and two more resistance. But the big thing about this Jacob is the big lead that he has in his attack. Now, in Lady and Birthrights, there's really not going to be overkill damage when you're talking about ninjas because there are just so many bulky units that have axes that just having 30 attack isn't going to be super impactful against those units. An example of that is just one of the Camilla chapter's generic wyvern lords that show up. Now, if you have Jacob and Saizo paired with their wives during this map, and just having them attack with buffed iron shurikens, Saizo will probably be doing 6 damage at 8 rank shurikens, which is not ideal. So the extra attack that Jacob has just from his sheer skills is going to be a very big help in letting you spend fewer rounds of combat taking care of these wyvern lords. Yeah, definitely. The the this is a this is a great example of just like how strong skills are in this game. So Saizo is already like a very good yeah. unit in his own right, but the fact that Jacob just gets so much damage stack from outside sources and like the Saizo you have here does not that just makes Jacob pull ahead in terms of damage so yeah. much. There are some drawbacks that Jacob does have, like the hit rates and damage outputs, and I guess a little bit of crit rates if yeah. you care. But um, otherwise, yeah, generally Jacob is going to have the easier time, which is really, really nice. The one thing that is unfortunate, though, is the level of effort that you have to put in to uh, using Jacob compared to Saizo, yeah. I feel like. Because uh, getting Jacob to the point where he can do things like this is a bit of a project. Uh, meanwhile, Saizo can kind of just out the box be a carry, which is um, kind of the big difference between the two. Jacob does have the notable downside of being restrictive in your marriage pairings if you want to make him one of your carries. So he generally wants to marry Hana or Kagero, which will lock certain other units out of ninja and samurai. He also notably cannot have the combination of the ninja class and vantage, which many of the units that I think are better than him are able to do with their preferred offensive class set. Also notably, Jacob does take more damage, which if we were taking him at a higher level, which he probably will be at this map, will be a bigger deal because Saizo's uh, defensive damage stacking will allow him to take more hits once the opposing numbers get closer to zero damage. And yeah, not to mention, um, Vantage uh, is a great boon for yeah. Saizo here because paired with the lower damage output, uh, Vantage will give him more opportunities to have guard gauge here. And while having lethality, actually, lethality paired with Vantage may be fine, but it's in in general lethality uh, you might want to probably take that off but otherwise uh saizo will probably have the easier time surviving on enemy phase which is kind of a big deal one big thing about enemy phase is that you not only ha want to have to think about how are you going to kill the enemies that are going to attack you uh you also have to think about how am i going to survive the enemies that are going yeah. to attack me and that is something that some units struggle with a lot more. So yeah, Jacob is probably one of the better units in this game. He does require more investment than some of your other units to really start getting going as one of your carries, but the fact that he can be so much more than just a carry is one of his biggest advantages over the other units that you have in Birthrights. Yeah, for sure, and um... I, I do want to add that this is probably his best route if you want to make him one yeah. of your carries because he gets a lot of access to a lot of things like in in conquest he doesn't get access as much to things like sword master or mechanist without yeah. corin and corin oftentimes won't want to marry yep. jacob and in revelation the stats of the enemies are just so high that a lot of these builds and stat stacking that Jacob can do in Birthright just don't work as well. Um, so 
if you really want to play around with him, this is definitely your best uh, route to do it in. Yeah. All right. Is there anything you want to plug at the end of the video? Um. Yeah, I mean, I I have my own YouTube channel. Um, I am currently doing a birthright playthrough where I use attack stance only in combat. Um, so I am not allowed to ever use paired up stats or the guard gauge at all. And uh, it's been pretty fun. Uh, I've been using Jacob 2 a lot um, throughout the uh, later half of the game. And he has been quite successful even without reclassing out of his base class in Butler. Um, he's been really one of just my most valuable units in general. Um, it's been yeah. pretty fun. Um, I've seen you using the silent staff more than anyone else that I've ever seen. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, make sure to check Blue's channel out. And hopefully we still have some people here to listen to this after this two and a half hour video. <laughs> I've, I've, I've drinking three water bottles and my throat is still sore from this. Yeah. <laughs>